Why was the Chevrolet 396 big block engine so powerful and dangerous that people tried to ban it? The birth of a monster. It's the 1960s, and the muscle car battle is in full swing. Chevrolet is ready to dominate, and the 396 big block is their weapon. This engine powers cars like the Camaro, Chevelle, El Camino, and even the Corvette, becoming a legend with its raw power. But there's a secret that whispers about a banned version called the Porcupine engine. So, was it really outlawed by NASCAR? Did Chevrolet secretly downplay its power to keep it under the radar? And how does this mysterious 396 engine tie into the legendary 427 mystery motor? Well, get ready, because this is a story of speed, hidden truths, and corporate games. The secret engine GM didn't want you to know about. Picture this. It's 1963, and inside a Chevrolet factory, engineers are burning important papers. GM just banned factory-backed racing, and some engineers aren't happy. One of them secretly takes a blueprint for an engine too powerful to be forgotten. The 396 Big Block. This engine wasn't just another muscle car engine, it was part of a special line that began with Chevrolet's secret 427 mystery motor. While the 427 and 396 were different engines, they shared groundbreaking technology. The biggest innovation? The canted valve cylinder head. Chevy engineers angled the intake and exhaust valves, creating a high-flow design that boosted efficiency and horsepower. The strange design made the engine look like it was full of metal spikes, earning it the nickname Porcupine. The 396 was officially introduced in 1965, and it came in three versions. The first version, the L78, 425 horsepower, was a raw powerhouse with a solid lifter cam, holly carb, 11 to 1 compression, and 4 bolt main caps. The second version, the L37, 375 horsepower, was a slightly less intense version used in the rare Chevelle Z16. The third version, the L35, 325 horsepower, was a milder version for full-sized Chevys like the Impala and Biscayne. Right from the start, this engine was a game-changer. It wasn't just another V8, it was a muscle car revolution. But why didn't it reach its full potential? The legend of the 396 Big Block didn't whisper into existence, but it roared. It shook the streets and left a trail of burnt rubber. The 396 was the first of its kind, a huge leap forward in American horsepower. But under its powerful chrome-covered exterior, there was a darker side. A secret that would see the 396 buried under corporate red tape, political interference, and government emissions crackdowns. But before we uncover the hidden truth behind the banned Chevrolet 396 big block engine, let's take a closer look at everything you need to know about this legendary motor. In 1965, Chevrolet introduced the Mark IV big block engine, first as the 396. It powered full-size Impalas, Corvettes, and a few rare Z16 SS 396 Chevelles, marking the start of the muscle car era. But Chevy didn't stop there. By 1966, they brought in the 427, pushing out an incredible 425 horsepower. Then in 1970, the 396 got a bigger upgrade. It expanded to 402 cubic inches. However, they kept calling it the SS396. Now you may ask why. Well, because the name had become iconic. As time went on, the big block evolved. By the 1990s, with the introduction of the Gen V and Gen 6 engines, GM added new features like one-piece rear main seals and hydraulic roller lifters. But despite all the changes, none of that mattered when the government stepped in. The final chapter in the displacement war came with the 502. Although it never made its way into a production car, it became a coveted crate engine. GM's way of proving they still had muscle in the game. Blocks, cranks, and rods. Chevy's big block engine design was nearly perfect for an iron and steel V8. The bore spacing was set at 4.840 inches, which allowed for huge increases in engine size, eventually reaching a massive 572 cubic inches in custom builds. The factory iron blocks were nearly indestructible, but the 1969 ZL1427 stood out. Made of all aluminum, this engine was built for racing Camaros and Corvettes and was a hidden gem in the racing world. However, with its sky-high price, GM couldn't keep it around for long. In 1991, the Gen V Big Block arrived, 
featuring one-piece rear main seals, updated oiling systems, and hydraulic roller cams. But for die-hard fans, it was a letdown. The older Mark IV engine was a reliable no-nonsense powerhouse, while the Gen 5 seemed too polished and less aggressive. Then came the 8.1-liter, 496 cubic inch, Vortec, a heavy-duty truck engine that barely resembled the original big blocks. It felt like the end of the line for the classic big block Chevy. The crankshafts, however, still held on to tradition. Early 396 engines had internally balanced cranks, with a neutral harmonic balancer and flywheel. But with the arrival of the 454, Chevy switched to external balancing, which meant offset weights were added to both ends of the crankshaft. This made it tricky to mix and match parts. On the other hand, the connecting rods were simpler. Early 396 and 427 engines had rods with 3 8 inch bolts, but high-performance versions used stronger 7 16 inch bolts. If you were revving above 6,500 RPM, the stock rods weren't going to survive, so aftermarket forged steel rods were the go-to upgrade to handle the big block's power. Heads and camshafts. The real magic of the big block Chevy 396 engine happens in the cylinder heads. There were two main types, oval port and rectangular port. Oval ports were made for streetcars, focusing on low-end torque to give you smooth power on the road. Rectangular ports, on the other hand, were for racers, built for high revving performance and quick quarter-mile times. However, there was one major mistake, and it was the peanut port heads used on heavy-duty truck engines. These were designed for low RPM strength, but they choked out performance. Anyone looking for real horsepower quickly swapped these out. Then came the big question. Flat tappet or roller camshaft? Until the 1990s, all big blocks used flat tappets. But with the Gen 5 engine, GM switched to hydraulic roller lifters. At first, people thought it was just a gimmick, but roller cams quickly proved they were far superior. They offered more lift, longer duration, and much less wear on the engine. If you wanted serious power, the roller cam shaft was the way to go. The banning of a legend. What happened to the Chevrolet 396 big block once the king of muscle cars? Well, it got kicked to the curb, thanks to a perfect storm of government regulations, insurance crackdowns, and corporate priorities. By the early 1970s, things started going south for the big block. The government was getting serious about emissions, and the EPA was eyeing engines like the 396, which thrived on high compression and horsepower. But as leaded fuel was on the way out and catalytic converters were coming in, the 396 just couldn't keep up with the new rules. It had that wild camshaft, free-flowing heads, and a taste for gasoline that didn't play nice with what the future demanded. And let's not forget insurance companies. Muscle cars were suddenly public enemy number one, and premiums were through the roof. GM wasn't going to sit idly by and let its cars become financially radioactive. So, the decision was made. Detune the engines, lower compression, and slowly kill off the troublemakers. The 396 was one of the first to go. By the mid-70s, it went from a high-octane beast to a sad, watered-down shadow of itself with compression dropping from 11 to 1 to a pitiful 8 to 1. Horsepower? Yeah, that took a nosedive too. In 1975, GM quietly retired the 396 and replaced it with a more emission-friendly 400 small block that didn't have nearly as much fun. Also, what about the rumors of NASCAR banning the legendary 396 Porcupine engine? Well, here's the kicker. There was no official NASCAR ruling banning it. Back in the 1960s, NASCAR had strict rules that if an engine didn't make it into production cars, it couldn't race. Chevrolet had already upset the Apple cart with the 427 mystery motor and the 396. It was just too street savvy for NASCAR's super speedway. The horsepower lie. Chevrolet's horsepower ratings in the 1960s were more suggestions than facts. Take the L78396 for example. Officially, it was rated at 375 horsepower, but real dyno tests revealed the engine was actually making closer to 425 horsepower, maybe even more. So why the creative math? Well, there were two big reasons. First, insurance companies as already mentioned. 
More horsepower meant higher insurance premiums, and GM wasn't about to let their cars be priced out of the hands of average buyers. By underreporting the power, Chevrolet made the muscle cars seem less dangerous, which kept insurance costs down and buyers happy. Second, corporate red tape. GM had a rule limiting mid-size cars to 400 cubic inches, and the 396 was already pushing that boundary. If the 396 was rated too high, GM might have gotten a tap on the shoulder from management, wondering why their cars were packing so much punch. So, they played it safe and kept the numbers lower. But anyone who's driven an L78-powered Chevelle knows the real story. It was an absolute beast. On the drag strip, it often outperformed the Hemis and Ford Cobra Jets, engines that had a reputation for being untouchable. The legacy of the band, 396. The 396 engine might not have reached its full potential, but it still left a lasting impact on muscle car history. It paved the way for the 427, the 454, and even the massive 8.1-liter Vortec engines used in Chevy trucks much later on. But here's the big question. Where is it now? Some people believe the original untamed Porcupine engine is still out there, tucked away in garages, abandoned factories, or even hidden in GM's secret vaults. Maybe, just maybe, it's biding its time, waiting for the perfect moment to roar back into the spotlight. The spirit of the 396 in modern times. The 396 may have been banned, but Chevrolet didn't back down. Instead, they introduced an engine that's just as powerful and just as legendary, the modern 6.2-liter V8. This engine has earned a reputation as one of the most powerful and reliable engines in the world, proving that Chevy's muscle car spirit is alive and well. So, let's dive into how the 6.2-liter V8 stands up in terms of performance, technology, and of course, that unmistakable Chevy power following the spirit of the 396 engine. First, let's talk specs. The 6.2-liter V8, part of the iconic small block engine family that also gave us the 396, packs 420 horsepower and 460 pound-feet of torque. This engine provides an incredible performance package that's sure to make any driver smile. And it doesn't just offer raw power, it's a masterclass in efficiency too. Equipped with cutting-edge technology like direct injection, dynamic fuel management, and variable valve timing, the 6.2-liter V8 delivers peak performance without sacrificing fuel efficiency. Now, let's break this down in terms of real-world performance. Take the Corvette Stingray, for example. With the 6.2-liter V8 under the hood, it can hit 0 to 60 miles per hour in under 3 seconds. This is a level of speed that would have made the 396 engine proud, though it probably wouldn't have kept up with today's sports cars. And for those who need a bit more muscle, the Chevrolet Silverado 1500, equipped with the 6.2-liter V8, can tow up to 13,300 pounds. Whether you're hauling a boat, a trailer, or just flexing your muscle, this truck gets the job done. Plus, this engine is surprisingly fuel-efficient for such a powerhouse, offering around 15 21st MPG in the Silverado, so you won't be constantly running to the pump. Now, where can you find this marvel? Well, it's available in some of Chevrolet's most celebrated models. For example, Corvette Stingray. The 6.2-liter V8 is tuned to perfection in this iconic sports car, delivering thrilling speed and precision handling. Up next, we have Chevrolet Silverado 1500 High Country. For those looking for a mix of luxury and capability, the 6.2-liter V8 offers power with class. So, is the 6.2-liter V8 a good engine? Absolutely. It combines high performance with versatility, handling everything from sports car thrills to truck heavy lifting. However, there are some things to consider. While it shines in power, fuel economy isn't its strong suit. In other words, city driving can be a bit thirsty. Maintenance costs may also be a bit higher, thanks to the engine's advanced technology. Even though the 396 might have been banned, the 6.2 liter V8 is here to carry the torch still dominating the streets and winning hearts. Have you felt the raw power of the 396 engine? Drop your thoughts below. And if you're a true Chevy fanatic, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more in-depth stories on legendary engines.